Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. Today, gonna be a match between Mr. Goat and I can fathom here for your brave new world cast for the week. It's gonna be on Pride of Alteris. Very friendly to each other. Top left, we've got uh, Red Terran. It is Mr. Goat, and in the bottom right, we've got I can fathom. Alrighty then. So, it's gonna be a PBT at the Brave Noob World level. Which just means it is silver or a bronze league place. And to Sniper Monkey at the email address in the description. Th thanks again, Sniper Monkey, for screening every single replay we get for this. And again, I think you got three replays for the last two weeks. So, if you want to get cast by Falcon Paladin, now is the time. Okay, so walling off your ramp leading into your natural base with a gateway is a good idea. And walling off the top of your ramp with a barracks is also a good idea. Two racks opening with no gas. So if this were a professional game, I would say two, uh, two racks dedicated pressure with marines. But this is Brave Noob World. You can't tell, well, the builds are not a guarantee of <laughs> what you're going to see here. Let's just say it that way. Probe scouting out. Oh, three racks. Okay, so three racks marine pressure. Bum, bum, bum. If I didn't know better, oh, I'd say this is Cure, but it's a fourth Rax coming up. Cure likes his three Rax openings versus Protoss. And I cast a Freakle World a world number 93 last night with Laughing Games at AfrikaTV.com slash Laughing Games. And we had Cure versus Zest in a best of five, and Cure went three Rax pressure like three of the games like let's just say that and it killed zest twice so <laughs> i mean whew, it's really strong it's really good it's a pretty standard i don't know kind of a stim timing off of two bases and three racks to show up with marines and marauders and you don't even necessarily you don't even have any uh metamax at that time it's such an early push and if you show up and there's not a shield battery with overcharge there's not like i don't know charge on your zealots you're just gonna die to it as a protoss player it's a bad thing so let's see what we get here. Now, we have gas. So you start making marauders and stuff. Oh, he's supply blocked. Yes, is about right. So the intent is to get some marini stuff done. But being supply blocked, and they start floating cash. That's exactly kind of what's happening here. And pro tip for the day is going to be make your supply before you need it. Okay, so if you look at your supply count up here. And it says you've got about five available, six available supply before you need more supply. Just make a supply depot or throw down a pylon, right? Just never stop making them, I guess, is the thing. Never stop making supply depots or SCVs. Never stop making pylons or probes, that kind of a thing. Which I think we've talked about a lot in these past casts. But, yeah, I don't know about this. I mean, if you're going for this four racks, one base opening, you got to be aggressive. Your opponent has two bases. They have more workers than you do. Do you have... I mean, did scout with a probe and recognize there wasn't a natural base and there were a bunch of marines out. So I think I can fathom has a general concept of what's coming up here, and I like this. We're walling off. We have zealots. Got a cannon at the top of the ramp. Making another zealot. Stalkers are actually not bad against unupgraded marines. Just a thought here. If you're I can fathom who's watching this, stalkers are not going to be bad in that situation at all. Not terrible. Does require some micro to kind of beat them, but... Anyway, is that another... Oh, it's a factory. So Mr. Goat... Going factory, getting a second gas up. So yeah, this is not any kind of a real build. But you know what? It's okay. And you know what you can also do is if you can save a bunch of minerals by reactoring a couple of these barracks. And your marine production increases without making another entire 150 mineral barracks. But I, I got a feeling Mr. Goat knows what add-ons are. He has a pretty good concept of spending his cash and being aggressive. And if he doesn't know what a reactor is, I'll be very, very surprised. Now here's the problem with being aggressive on this map, is you show up, and your enemy, you have to come up a ramp to get them. And it's like, ugh, you don't have great vision, it's very scary to come up here, and so and Mr. Ghost just like, nah, let's let's wait until we have a siege tank maybe. Oh, we do know about add-ons, see, tech lab there, tech lab there, tech lab, okay, these, and a reactor, all right, good. So mixing it up is good, right? do want marines if you want to go for marauders great get a tech lab if you want to go for combat shield and stim and stuff absolutely tech lab for those two and then a tech lab on the factory for siege tanks and now he's expanded so hmm yeah this is just kind of a you know this is brave new world this is a fairly not well executed style three racks four racks opening rush 
But then again, he got scouted by I Can Fathom, and he kind of prepared for it. And it's easier to prepare against, against that kind of a thing when you have a ramp your enemy is coming up into. So I like it. I like what I Can Fathom is doing here. Both players spending their money fairly well. I mean, Mr. Goat is doing it better than I Can Fathom, but I Can Fathom has, you know, 40 workers compared to the 26 that Mr. Goat has. So it's easier to spend your money if you only have 20 workers versus if you have 40. Hey, hey. Concussive Shell's actually the priority upgrade Mr. Goat is going for here. For his huge number of two Marauders, they're going to have a Concussive Shell, which is really good if you're chasing, but if you're attacking, I guess it prevents your opponents from being able to pull wounded units back as easily if they're Concussive Shelled, so that's that's a benefit too. We will roll with it. But yeah, as long as we're hanging out, quick plug for... What do we want to say here? Falconpaladin.store. It is a merch site. We can get hats and hoodies and t-shirts and mugs and all sorts of great stuff. Falcon Paladin branded, Starcraft branded, kind of. So check it out at falconpaladin.store. And you will be happy. All right, Marine. Just checking to see if there's a third base coming up from the Protoss. There is. And the Marine tries to save his own life by getting out of there. And you know what? I think he does. He does. Look at him escape. What an absolute boss. Boss man. Stims on the way from Mr. Goat. All right, so at some point in this play, I th would love to see you get a starport. But not happening. I do like that he's making supply. He's, con you know, he's supply blocked, but he's he's trying to keep up. He's trying to keep up with additional supply depots. If one SCV constantly making supply depots doesn't keep up, then sure, have two SCVs just constantly making supply depots, and that's probably better for you. So we're going for Templar Archives. Ooh, that's some fancy stuff for Brave New World here from I Can Fathom. But this is, oh man, 46 to 30 army supply with a siege tank. No charge on these zealots yet. Remember what I said about how good charge in this situation? They try to focus down the tank and they do. But now everybody's going to die. I can fathom, can't hold against this. I mean, this is just too many marines with stim. There are marauders in here too. Trying to slow warp in zealots. The third base is a total loss. Can I can fathom, hold on. He's not taking a third base anytime soon, that's for sure. Army value is 38 to zero. Oh no, how, how do you? Okay, okay, get, you need to be chrono boosting out charge. Like, I mean, that honestly is gonna help you more than anything else here. Ooh, this cannon's getting some decent, decent kills. Okay, one kill, one kill. Oh, focusing, I don't know if that was intentional, but he focused on the very wounded Marine first. Oh, gets another one on the way out, okay. That is the benefit of Protoss, is you can warp in your reinforcements very quickly, as long as the pylon is touching a warp gate or a nexus, right? We know that. The reason this was a slow warp in is because there was definitely a pylon, but not touching a nexus. Oh my gosh, you're going to try to... I couldn't fathom. I don't know how I feel about this, man. Remember when I was like, you're not getting a third base anytime soon? Yeah, that's definitely true. Charge lots. Doing better. But it's, uh, three charge lots against this much bio is not going to work out. So yeah, third base does not happen. Does not happen at all. Storm's on the... Okay, I can fathom. Look, man, if you can use Storm effectively, you're going to get promoted out of this Brave New World League very quickly, man. You're going to get promoted into Gold and Platinum, and if you have good Storm usage and decent builds and your economy is good, there's just some steps you need to take to get into Diamond. But I think you're there. You're looking pretty good here. Right? Once Storm is out, and if you can get some decent connections, like, that's just... It's good against everything. Storms are good against Zerg, Protoss, and Terran, so any matchup you're in, if you're tossing Storm down on enemy armies, it's going to be much easier to win that fight. But plus, is a lot of reinforcements. Mr. Goat, up to 40 workers, having a hard time spending his money, as we talked about. Finally has a starport. They're going to make another starport before making any medevacs or, like, reactoring this starport or anything. But, oh, he Archon one of his High Templar. Uh, okay. I mean, I would rather save it for Storm. Archon doing bonus damage versus biological. Urgh, the Protoss is in so much trouble. So much trouble. But this Archon's getting some nice hits off on the top here. Don't go into tank range. Don't go. Guardian shield is kind of nice, I guess. Oh, actually going to try to focus down the siege tank with the Archon, which, hey, that works, I guess. Archon, we got, maybe, you know what? I was, I was poo-pooing your choice to go for an Archon here, but this guy's got nine kills and is alive and is pulling back and has exactly 10 hp and no shields is real and i can fathom insists he wants a third base which you know what i can buy it did that archon just wander into tank range 
Holy smokes. All right, well. Okay, so, hmm, third base is alive, for I can fathom. Mr. Goat, oh, does he not know? He knows about orbitals, he just has an orbital that's natural yet, which, I mean, it would be nice. Getting some medevacs as part of what he's doing here would be really, really good. Any High Templar as part of this crew? No, I think we took all the High Templar when we made and turned them into Archons, because, no, I guess one High Templar did die. I don't know if he got a storm off, though. These guys have almost enough energy for Storm. They're very, very close to getting it. Remember when the Kadaran Amulet existed for the upgrade for High Templar, and once they warped in, they could instantly throw down a Storm, and it was super good for defense? And be like, oh no, 30 Lings showed up, warping High Templar in two seconds, instant Storm. It was super good and dumb as well. All right, so we're gonna, army value. Look who has more army now. Well, it's still Mr. Goat, actually, but. In this location, it's the Protoss. Run. <laughs> Run, Marauders. Run. Run, Marines. You're getting chased. You're getting chased by the enemy. Oh, I like this sneaky third base location. No, he's not going to check that. Why would he check that? Okay, he's not checking that. He's not checking that. Okay, this is a beautiful storm location. Get it. Yes! Oh, two great storms, and that changes the tide. Oh, I can fathom. Are we sure you're in bronze and silver? This spell casting is amazing. All right, so I think that's your GG. It's 48 to 13 army supply. The main base is almost mined out here for Mr. Goat. His natural base has no mining at it whatsoever. His sneaky third base doesn't have anything happening either. And he's running the SCVs in a direction, I guess, that does draw I can fathom away from the Ninja third, which keeping that alive is... I mean, you don't have a great chance of staying alive right now. And really, to be honest, you're playing against someone who knows how to use Psionic Storm and has three bases and has 48 workers. And yeah, this is just your GG. So hit that like button if you enjoyed that one, Protoss fans. And I mean, not bad play from the Terran either. Just didn't have medevacs until now. Which, if you don't have any medevac support until 12 minutes, like, just cancel one of these barracks and make a starport, man. Start making a couple medevacs to add to your group. It would have really helped in some of these battles. I'm not going to tell you to start using spellcasters or anything. Because it's, it's a little bit harder to use ghosts and ravens accurately for Terran than it is for you for High Templar. For Protoss. For a lot of reasons. I like this tank back here. It's like, <laughs> the units are so dumb. They're like, well, we can't see the siege tank, so obviously we can't attack it, even though it's smashing us in the face. Dude, those High Templar... Oh, okay. Archonsum. This guy's casually got 16 kills. Archon, Archon, Archon. And then reinforcing units are here. Uh, the third base, the third ninja for Mr. Goat is running. So that's good. These Archons need to walk over to the siege tank and kill it. Like, go up around the outside if you want to, but it's just, it needs to die. The AI is so dumb, though. You see this in every matchup. Tank is hitting you, but you can't see it because your vision is not as far as the Siege Tank's fire rate, fire range. So watch, watch this, watch this. We're going to get in range of the Siege Tank, and the Archons are going to be like, oh, hold on, we're working on it. The Archons are going to be like, we're being attacked. Oh, well, I can't see what it is, so obviously it's fine. Oh, he's not doing that. Ah, my science experiment. My demonstration. Oh, no, no, no. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Watch. And they're like, hmm, I guess we're just going to go attack this refinery. But he knows now. So he manages to manually tell his guys to go kill that siege tank. And that's, that's great stuff. I keep thinking the attacks of the High Templar are Dark Templar attacks. They sound very similar. Oh, we got a battle cruiser out. Oh, who did me not paying attention to the production tab? I just figured he was dead. I mean, he is dead. But, I mean, he got a BC out, which is pretty bad if your enemy's going Archon Stalker, I suppose. Just a thought. And, oh, Yamato finished right before that fusion core burned down. Another battle cruiser. Where are you going? Oh, the battle cruiser jumped across the map. <laughs> of course it did. You have recall. You have recall. Oh no, I couldn't fathom. All right, this is something you need to figure out if you're gonna do this. If you're gonna get promoted is recall is a thing. And it means you can instantly take your army from anywhere on the map to back home to defend against such a thing. 
You can just recall, like, you know, seven or eight of your stalkers, and that'd be fine, too. God, this pathing is just dumb. There we go. Manually dealing with the stupid pathing when you A-move. A-move is good. It's not that good. This battle crew right here is defending, but really should probably just get out. Yamato. Wah! Kills one of the stalkers and then jumps out of there. <laughs> I love that. So it's just kind of a game of uh, hunt right now. Keep some units... No, 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 no. Keep some of the units here. He's not sure what he wants to do. It's like, you know what? They say never base race a Terran. And honestly, you don't have a Stargate. So you should not be base racing a Terran. But I think I can fathom as base racing a Terran. Oh, no. Look at this. Mr. Goat taking another sneaky ninja. Okay, Battle Cruiser does get taken down by a couple stalkers and like some kind of support stuff here too. So that BC is dead. Did another one go down? There's still, there's still one over here. He's going to defend his ninja bottom left. And it's really taken, I can fathom, a long time to kill this base. He's been in here like three or four times and just hasn't taken the time to murder everything. Yeah, and this is Terran fluing his buildings. As Terrans do when they're down, 139 to 25 supply to waste everybody's time and be bad manner about this. Okay, look, I know you have this base, and I know you have this base, but your tech structures consist of a floating factory. And I think that's it. You have a factory. You're not going to win this game. It's just impossible. You know what you need to do, I can fathom, is throw down a Stargate and start just pumping Void Rays. Just because there's probably buildings that are going to be floating to the to the dead airspace that you can't reach with your Stalkers. And if you have Void Rays, you can handle that. So the factory dies. He's building a new barracks. And he's making... Oh yeah, he's like, what I need? Marines. Which uh, I would agree with you, except there are so many High Templar with full energy here that it seems like a bad idea. Maybe don't do that. Oh, try to come back in, Mr. Goat. You know, like, come on. Come on. I can fathom knows what you have. Hilarious. And this one, too. Like, you, he saw you float over here, man. Well, I guess there aren't a lot of good options when you're trying. <laughs> when you are down 165 to 31 supply, but. Oh, he found this. Okay. So this is where all the SCVs are. So it was a decent, like, 20 worker count. Now it's. 11, and some of them are running, but they're getting chased by a zealot, which is horrible. Floating this barracks off. I'm getting blink. I'm not sure that blink's going to help you as much as you want it to. Worker count. Six. Most of them down here. Oh, here we go. Here it is. GG. Uh, Mr. Goat taps out. I can fathom is your winner. Which we were aware was going to happen about three minutes ago four minutes ago but you know what it's okay sometimes these games need to breathe a little bit sometimes terrans need to float their buildings a bit before they realize they're dead so end of the day pretty effective stuff i mean just play out of i can fathom the storm everything everything in this game was the storm kind of eighteen thousand resources lost for goat eleven thousand for i can fathom only lost one of his high templar didn't really get too many storms off after the first couple that defended very well that third base and allowed him to keep it happening the Battlecruiser play was kind of interesting for Mr. Goat. Not a bad one, but just medevacs. Medevacs are going to be the answer for him or anything else as the game went on. So, <sighs> GG. Well played. Well played indeed there today. Fantastic. Fantastic show of how High Templar Storm is good against Terran, right? Right, and scouting as well. He scouted the multiple racks, reinforced the top of his ramp at his natural, and he was ready for it. And the Marines didn't even try to get up there. Didn't even try. So this was a very well-played game by Protoss, and I feel like we're going to get promoted here. So thanks for sending the game in, I Can Fathom, and that's going to be it for me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void and a Brave New World. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw, what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself. Okay,